हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल सर्वर ज्ञान माय नेम इज डॉक्टर लोकेंद्र सिंह एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू दैट व्हाट शुड बी रोड मैप टू प्रिपेयर फॉर डेवोप्स बिकॉज सो मेनी पीपल आर कंफ्यूज दैट वेयर टू स्टार्ट पीपल आर वर्किंग एज लाइन एक्स एडमिन दे आर वर्किंग एज ऑपरेशन गाय बट दे आर क्वाइट कन्फ्यूज लाइक वेयर टू स्टार्ट विद बिकॉज वेन इट कम्स टू डेवॉप्स डेवॉप्स पर्सन शुड नो multiple tools and technologies so today i'm going to explain you like like how to start and where to start it from reason being because there should be proper sequence and what tool we should learn at what moment but before starting this video guys i would like to request you to please like share and subscribe and do not forget to comment your views and your thoughts on this particular topic okay so i would like to begin with this particular tool which is known as cloud platform as of now every company is trying to hire or to opt for those cloud engineers who are familiar with devops and uh, within devops the very first tool which is asked that is cloud so you can opt any one uh, either aws azure or uh, gcp it means google cloud platform you can opt any but most preferred is aws reason being most of companies are working with aws so obviously they want to hire those guys who are still working with aws or is if not not working so they should have more than good enough knowledge with aws environment why to learn cloud platform first of all because you should have understanding for such a platform where you can build your infrastructure so that is why first of all you should understand and you should uh, know you should be able to understand and work with any cloud form cloud platform okay now once you are familiar with aws what will you do there now you will have to work with linux most of companies are working with linux operating system yes for sure your distribution may be different some people are working some organizations are working with red hat some are working on cent os some are working with debian mandriva suze nepix ubuntu and whatsoever but base is linux itself so for managing your servers installing software like you are familiar with cloud platform what what will you do after creating a creating a resident instance if you are not familiar with the like how to install software how to manage user there how to assign permission how to write a shell script and all so how will you uh, manage your environment what will you do after learning aws so after learning your aws environment or your cloud platform you are supposed to learn your operating system that should be linux fine after linux you should have basic understanding of any of database maybe mysql postgres mariadb and mongo so any of database you can have basic understanding for reason being because when you are going to talk about like you are working as devops admin so for sure you should be able to understand what is database how does it work how to install how to reset password of database how to create replica of database if you have to take backup so you should be able to understand how to take backup if you have to automate backup creation so you should be able to understand that if it is uh, like primary and secondary database creation you should understand if you have to go for uh, creation of rep, uh, you you need to go for read replica creation you should be able to understand master master concept master slave architecture you should be able to understand what all if there is a replica lag you should be able to understand how to find slow queries out of your mysql postgres and all so these sort of operational task you should be able to understand properly i do not say or uh, like if it is possible to learn then it is good to go with that you should be able to write queries as well but at least your admin level task you should be able to perform reason being because when it comes to devops so operation guy should always know these sort of task because these task are always op, always uh, performed by your operation team only now when it it comes to like uh, environment creation so why to create multiple servers so people are uh, going with uh, most of organization have op started opting for containers either docker container or kubernetes either of containerization mechanism you should know reason being 
when you are going to create virtual machine so you have to pay more and you you utilize that particular machine very less so any of container environment you should know either docker or your uh, kubernetes and within docker container how to select ami how to build ami uh, sorry how to build image how to create a, a docker container how to expose port how to mount volume from your base machine to your uh, container and uh, how to manage logs if you have to run any command inside your container when you are working with your base machine so how to perform that operation you should know so this sort of question you should know and most of how to manage network of docker container and how to manage swarm it means orchestration of your docker container like how to spin multiple containers if it is required there should be some condition like if load is increasing if number of hits are coming really high so your docker container should all also automatically spin another container or this should be replica of your existing container which is running in your environment after that you should be able to write some uh, shell scripts using bash maybe perl or maybe python scripts you should be able to write because couple of tasks you are going to have maybe you need to check logs of a linux operating system maybe you need to automate backup of your database maybe you need to run some containers using shell scripts so just to automate your daily daily routine stuff you need to understand like bash script writing perl or maybe python any of like scripting language you should know if you know python then that is the great thing reason being python is such a such a scripting language or programming language you can call it using it you can write multiple stuff and within very less number of line code so python is really helpful for you and if you know perl so perl is also useful for devops reason being you can write your own programs here then after nagios when you have set up your environment so you have set up your cloud platform you have created your server on linux your db is uh, working fine your docker containers are running now it comes to how to monitor that particular so either nagios or any other monitoring tool you should know if you do not know any monitoring tool so it will become really hard for you to manage your infrastructure reason being you have set up your environment but right now you are not able to understand whether all the servers and services which ever are installed within your environment are working fine so this will be a challenge for you so at least one monitoring tool either nagios either your uh, uh, new relic app dynamics and elk whatever so at least one monitoring tool you should know then after you should be having quite good enough knowledge of git it means sub version controlling when any developer comes to you and developer asks for help related to version control system how to assign permission how to create repository what should be your branching strategy so this sort of question you should be able to answer being devops reason being because uh, the expectation from a devops guy are definitely going to meet this sort of questions that how to create new branch how to assign permission how to add keys how many types are there like how we can clone code from git repository to your local desktop maybe using ssh maybe using http or https protocol so anyhow you need to know about git how to uh, what is difference between git, git rebase what is difference between git rebase and, and merge how to pull code and how to check the remote of your git uh, repository so this sort of question you should know now when you have set up your uh, environment you have in installed your linux operating system or you have uh, your running containers now how to deploy your code either you can do that using your uh, obviously some bash shell script or perl or python script you can do or if you want to build code maybe you have java applications running in your environment and you want to deploy code so for deployment either you can go with jenkins or any sort of uh, automation tool so jenkins is most preferred tool if you are going to work with devops so 99% possibilities are there that you will have to face couple of question around jenkins and along with jenkins couple of plugins p l u g i n s plugins so couple of plugins you should uh, definitely know like uh, git git plugins github plugins you should know, you should know and if you are working with aws so right now git sub jenkins supports multiple plugins related to s3 
EC2, in fact, container plugins have been provided. So these sort of plugin you should know how to generate graph, how to check bug, how to check code quality, and uh, maybe you can go for uh, Sonar Cube, artifact repository, how to how to access or how to how to create how to build artifact of your running code, how to roll back using Jenkins script. Once everything is done, so now you are it's a turn to go for Ansible. It means you can call Ansible playbooks using your Jenkins because Jenkins supports Ansible play uh, Ansible uh, plugins as well. So either of tool, either Ansible, Chef, or Puppet, you should know one tool at least you must know. So Ansible is the easiest tool to learn. And what is difference between Ansible and Chef? And if you're going to face interviews, so you should be able to say that definitely I can learn any tool. Uh, maybe Chef, maybe Puppet or Ansible, you should already know before going for DevOps. Reason being, a couple of questions will definitely be asked to you that how do you replicate your changes from one server to another. For example, using Jenkins, you have built your code. Now, how will you deploy your code to multiple servers simultaneously? So you can you can answer like this, like uh, you build your code using Jenkins and once it is built, so for deployment, you are using Ansible playbook. If someone says, or uh, there's a question in interview that how do you deploy your code? So you can simply answer that we have written some playbook and those playbooks are responsible for installing new services or maybe replicating code from Jenkins servers. It, it, it picks code from Jenkins and it uh, sends code to rest of servers. And after that, all the uh, commands which are supposed to be executed. So Ansible performs that stuff. Now it comes to last, uh, last tool, which is ELK. It means Elasticsearch, Logistics and Kibana. This is combination of three. So let me write here E L A S T I C S E A R C H. Elasticsearch, Logistics and Kibana. Fine. So these tools you should know. It means when it comes like uh, there is a question you have more than 100 containers running for the same application how will you check like what particular container is not working well so for checking like what container is not working well you should be able to fetch logs from all the 100 containers at central location for doing that your elastic search is the engine which uh, process all the logs log stretch the particular agent to push logs from all the containers to your centralized search engine and Kibana is the particular dashboard where you can print all the logs. It, may, it means this is a particular mechanism or this is a particular tool which is useful to go for your uh, containerization. And uh, obviously all the containers, you can fetch log to one place and after that you can display them. And uh, obviously I must add one more thing here, web server. Web server is also quite important tool, maybe Apache. Maybe you can go for Nginx. Or you can go for Tomcat. So any of web server you should know after Docker container. Reason being, because if you talk about Nagios, if you talk about Jenkins, so you should be uh, you should be familiar with any of web server of web server as well. If we are talking about DevOps, so DevOps is definitely going to be never ending uh, process in the matter of learning. So you should be always open for learning new tools and technologies. So I hope this is it for this video guys. Please do write in comment box. How did you like this video? Or do you want any other topic to be explained? So thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. If you have any further questions, so please do write in comment box or you can write me at servergyan at gmail.com. So this is my email ID. You can uh, drop an email to this email ID. I will check and I will respond to your email. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good time. Happy learning from servergyan.